This is the Powerlifting America podcast, and today we've got a quick check-in with the 83-kilo world champion Delaney Wallace. He's just 12 days out from Sheffield, the biggest meet in powerlifting history. We talk about his prep and goals for Sheffield, his nerve-wracking win at IPF Worlds in 2022, and a bunch of other fun stuff that you probably didn't know about the strongest accountant alive. But before I bring Delaney in, make sure you don't miss Sheffield. Tickets are still available. Click the link in the description below for more information. Thank you to SBD and Aleko for their continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug-tested powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to powerlifting-america.com, become a member, check out our event page for all of our upcoming events and our store page for PA merch. Make sure you also follow us on Instagram at powerlifting underscore America. All right, with that, let's bring in the 83 kilo world champion, Delaney Wallace. I've got with me the 83 kilo world champion, Delaney Wallace. Welcome to the Powerlifting America podcast, Delaney. What's up, man? How are you doing? Uh, thanks for having me, man. Super excited. Everything is uh, is good. I'm blessed. Um, I'm just excited to be here and get to chop it up with you again, man. It's been a little while. Yeah, man. It's been since Austin that we've got to see each other face to face, you know, <laughs> outside of Zoom. So, um, yeah, it's good to see you again. I'm super excited for you. Um, as of today, we're like 13 days out from Sheffield. Um, yeah. you know, biggest meet in history, biggest money meet in history, most important powerlifting meet. It's been hyped up for like two or three years now since, since, you know, pre COVID, um, you know, 2020 was when it was supposed to happen before, but how excited are you now? Like 13 days out, like what, what are you feeling? Yeah, it was funny. I was talking to one of uh, a couple of the guys at the gym the other day, and it's that point of prep where your body just starts to feel like, oh, it's like mm-hmm. beat up, and and you know it's a part of it. So you know you have those those quick thoughts like, oh, what's going on? But then you you kind of let it all go. But um, I I just feel I, I feel super grateful, right? Um, grateful for like the opportunity, grateful for the stage, grateful to be able to you know fly across the world and compete again. Um, but also again, to your point, excited and just like, just ready, right. I, I feel ready for the moment. I feel ready for the competition. I feel ready for the actual day. Um, I mean, prep has been going amazing, um, thus far, like in ways that just most people just don't know or, or would understand unless you're in the gym with me. Um, uh-huh. we could touch on that a little bit as well. Oh, oh don't worry. Um, we'll get into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm not letting you get off the hook that easy. Um, <laughs> But yeah, man, I, I just feel I'm I'm excited. I'm just like let's let's it's time to go. It's time to to let this thing ro- rock. Um, and yeah, yeah, man. Um, I think you know we're all super excited about it. Um, you know, with Power of the America, we got nine athletes in this thing. Um, so Team USA is coming in really strong in the Sheffield. So it's a huge meet for us as well as you know as it is for each individual athlete that's in it, and obviously for powerlifting as a whole being just the biggest meet ever. Um, biggest money meet of all time. So it's a big deal for our sport. So we're taking it really serious. Um, I've been talking to a lot of the power of America, uh, Sheffield athletes, and they're all feeling the same way as you, by the way, uh, two weeks out, you know how it is. You're busted right now. You're feeling sore. You're waiting for that taper to come in, waiting to get that D load, you know, the week before and, uh, feel good. So, um, don't, don't worry about that at all. So talking about the Sheffield and, um, you know, thinking about how it's, going to be a huge stage, like literally not, not just figuratively the biggest meet ever. And it's going to be live streamed everywhere. And everyone's going to be talking about it. Um, it's the only real important meet happening in the next like month or so, you know, so it's going to be capturing the headlines for a while, but it's Mm -hmm. also literally a big stage. Um, I mean, it's going to be, uh, in this theater. And so how are you feeling with, with kind of like the lights and the drama and just all of the media attention that's going to be there? Is it going to be, is it, cause you know, powerlifters, a lot of powerlifters come from a background that's not necessarily sports, uh, team sports and things like this. So how do you feel about being on a big stage like that? Are you going to be scared of the bright lights? <laughs> no, I mean, scared of the bright lights. No, um, I, I'm not really, uh, it's not really a foreign concept to me. Like I grew up, I played football. I was captain mm-hmm. of the football team. Um, you know, I, I've, I've trained for the NFL combine and, and, and had that stage before. Um, when I was in, in a former, former life, I also did theater. Like I, I've been in front of crowds in multiple different settings in multiple different ways before. And so mm-hmm. this will be a little bit different from a standpoint of for like like powerlifting career. Yeah. Um, but I mean, still 2020, 2019, we're all nationals, 2020, we're all nationals. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
they, they, they were also big stages and a lot of eyes and a lot of people and a lot of hype on it. And so, I mean, powerlifting is that one sport. And that's why I think most powerlifters that don't there or haven't played an organized sport prior to that just don't understand. Powerlifting is one of the only sports that literally there is no variation between what we do in the gym and what we do on meet day. And so if the only variation is, okay, we have a couple more eyes, you know, on us. I mean, half the people in the gym, not me, because it's just not my style, but half the people in the gym are screaming and yelling in the gym to try to get half the gym to watch them anyway. So most people should feel excited that they finally have the attention. Um, It's just another day at the office, right? And, and, you know, if nerves do ever come up again, that kind of goes back to some of the things that I always tell people. It's like, find a rhythm, find like a cadence, find like a, a common thing that you can do every single time before you prepare for a lift that kind of shuts off that noise, shuts off the outside distractions, puts puts your brain in a position where, okay, this is the only thing that we need to do or that we're, that we're supposed to be doing. Everything else can wait till after, you know, that minute that you have um, uh, on the platform for each lift. Um, and I, I think you'll be okay. I, I, I don't know. I never, I, I always cringe a little bit when I hear powerlifters talk about, like, I remember my first nationals, um, and I'm like fresh off of like playing football. And I remember my first nationals and um, kids were complaining about like the bright lights and how like they couldn't see during bench or something like that. And I'm just like, close your eyes then. Like it's with bench. You don't need your eyes to bench, right? Like, yeah. like have you ever, have you ever run a fade route down the, down the right corner of a football field with two defenders on your back with yeah. and the lights in your eyes and have so it's it's a different kind of I guess paradigm of thinking, but uh, mm-hmm. no, nah, I mean the the stage itself, I haven't really put too much thought into it. I'd send a picture to my parents, and my sister, just so they can kind of see like all the stuff. Like there's this, just an excitement about that, but I mean, it could be in somebody's gym, and I really wouldn't wouldn't care. Yeah, I mean, your Gavin said the exact same thing. Um, it's the only sport where basically we're doing our competition every time we go into the gym, you know, it's exactly cool. And like you said, as well, just going, trying to catch a football, looking back into the sun or moving into the shadows and into the sun and some of these fields, you know, you see, it's like, obviously a little bit of light shining in your eye while you're trying to pinch press is going to be the least of your concerns. And yeah. I mean, you're a performer, you, you've been in theater before. I mean, you, you're, you know, quadruple quintuple threat you know, with singing and dancing and everything that you can do <laughs> as well yeah. as being, you know, the businessman and all this kind of stuff. So I wouldn't expect anything less than for you to put on a show. And you do have a little bit of theatricalness to your lifts as well. Like you got a little bit of a routine when you come out and you squat, same thing when you bench and stuff. So is that what you're talking about? When you kind of like have a little bit of a cadence of like, I'm, I do this every time, whether I'm in the gym and nobody's there, or I do it on the biggest stage ever at Sheffield. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, I allude to it a few times because I, I end up getting this question all the time. It's mm-hmm. like, if you go back to videos of me, when I like first started powerlifting, right. Um, you're going to see variations of the same exact thing that I do. There might be a slight thing that changes here and there as you just mm-hmm. get older and you, you continue to kind of progress. But I mean, I was doing it before anybody was even watching me. I was doing it before the championships. I was doing it when I was that kid in 2019 that said, Hey, I'm going to be nationally ranked like, and nobody even listened. Right. Um, And it's all about creating a rhythm and a cadence and a, a habit that allows you to do the same exact thing every single time with very little variation. Right. Um, Powerlifting is not a sport where my opponent can come in on the stage and then like push me over while I'm squatting. So I have to like be prepared, keep my head on a swivel. It's literally squat, rack, bench, press, like up, yeah. like it, 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 it's literally, it, it, that's it. And so um, I think that one thing that majority of powerlifting athletes we take for granted is the fact that we were so lackadaisical in our preparation for our lift, even from our warm up. Like I remember a young kid came to, to film me. He wanted to get into like, filming and so he's hey like I'm, I'm nearby do you mind if I like film one of your sessions yeah. and like one of the greatest compliments I could have ever gotten was like the person that you show yourself to be online is exactly who you are in real life mm-hmm. and every every single thing you do is with like purpose right he saw me warm up with the bar all the way to you know like 700 and my warm-up was all the way through every single exact one the same from one red to five or six or whatever the hell it is on the bar um 
And he's like, that, that it's interesting, right? And so yeah. that, that, that's why I do it. It's less for the theatrics of it. It's turned into a like leader, little theater thing. It's kind of like my trademark thing now. So I can't stop even if I wanted to. Yeah. Um, but it's more so for me to say, okay, whatever's going on in my brain, the second that I do this, the second that I do that, everything shuts off. And now we're off to the races and, and we'll, we'll come back to reality once, once the job is done. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I think it's going to you see that in all the top powerlifters uh, making all their warm-up sets look look exactly the same and um you know like i don't know if you know you know matt and Susie gary um Susie has a routine with her deadlift she's got like a robot dance that she does every time when she comes up and she mm -hmm. does a, says the exact same thing it's like it just has to be the same doesn't matter what it is you know um as long as it it fits you your personality feels good and it's just that routine so it's always the same and yeah, of course, it's going to evolve a little bit over the years. I mean, if we go way back in your, into your, I'm looking at your record book right now, back in the 2018 USPA days, Delaney days. Yeah. <laughs> You've been in the sport for a minute. I mean, you, you crashed onto the scene really hard um, in, you know, 2020 and then with the Arnold, you know, winning that. And, uh, from there you kind of haven't looked back, but I mean, but you've been around for, for a minute before that, um, you were around in back in 2018. So it's not like, uh, you're the new kid on the block by any means. You're just kind of yeah. the new kid on, on people's mind now, you know? Um, so, but before we go into like the backstory and the history, what are your goals for Sheffield? What do you want to do um, at Sheffield? I mean, the only re the only way to win is to break records. Right. So, um, yeah. You know, I'm going for the total record. Um, Joey and I, we haven't gone through numbers um, as of yet. Um, we're probably going to go back, um, go through that when he gets back from his trip, uh, specifically with Tim Sarp. But mm -hmm. even just kind of like in passing, those like arbitrary numbers that you're just kind of throwing out like, oh, yeah, I think you have this. I think you have that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the goal is to 100% break the record, um, which is 841 um, mm -hmm. for, for 83s. And uh, depending on what the day has and depending on if we have a perfect day, maybe even be the first uh, 83 to crack that 1900 mark, um, mm -hmm. which would be pretty cool. So uh, pounds, 1900 pounds. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know what that pounds. is in kilos or something like that. I, uh, I still, haven't, still haven't figured out the kilo math uh, uh, yeah. off the top of my head. Maybe me like 860 neither. or something like that. 861 um, is yeah. what that would be. So yeah, man. 861 like let's i'm gonna write that number down right now um <laughs> that's the number that you're going for that would put four that would put 20 keys on the on the world record eight which is currently 841 so yeah, yeah i mean that'd be a big deal if you did that bro <laughs> that'd be huge. yeah <laughs> absolutely um, and, absolutely and i know i know russ has done something around that um not for the world record like at, at u.s meets and stuff like that i think I don't have his numbers pulled up, but didn't he do, he did somewhere in that range, like, like just under that. Right. Um, so I know that he hit, um, like, I think it was like eight ninety or something close to that at, at 90 kilos. I know he went up a weight class, uh -huh. but I think even in, on the U S side, I think, um, if I'm, if my memory serves me correctly, it's still around like eight forty five. just do like injuries and yeah. stuff. And Russ has been so dominant. He doesn't really need to push in order to be the majority of us. So, yeah, you're right. Uh, he's, you're right. Uh, he's been doing his thing. Yeah. It's only 843 um best ever. Yeah. Yeah. Um so yeah, I mean, dude, even if you just do 844, that'll be sick. You know what I mean? That'll be ridiculously amazing. I mean, absolutely. <clears throat> so, we can get into this a little bit um talking about these yeah. numbers real quick. Uh, yeah. What would that mean to you to touch Russ's number? Um I think it mean, it means a number of different things and it depends on like where you want to kind of go with it. Right. There's always like the mental aspect of it. Right. And like the competitive, like what, what's it kind of mean for you and like your legacy as an athlete and just like things on that yeah. scene, you can go from it from a business standpoint of like, how can this be molded and shaped into something that benefits you monetarily, not just in the short term, but the long term. Um, or we can touch on both. Um, but I think the one that, most people would just be one interested in at least hearing about first is more of the athletic portion of it. And mm -hmm. what that means for other pieces. Um, for me, I think this, there's the, the, there will be that monkey that kind of gets off my back. Right. Mm -hmm. 
been I've been pretty good about staying out of the like limelight and just kind of being in my bunker and my shadows. But yeah. I mean, things get back to me and I hear, you know, that, you know, pieces here and there where, OK, hey, Dwayne went to the IPF like he, you know, he ran, you know, Russ is you know here and this and the third. And so there's always going to be talks and, you know, it is what it is. Um, the backstory behind how I got to the IPF, um, most people actually don't know. Um, yeah, that literally I told I, I literally told Joey I was like yo wherever Russ goes like I'm going right yeah. I, I just don't care and at first Russ was going to go powerlift to America IPF and then some yeah. things changes for like business where it just made more sense for him to stay domestic and I was just like all right cool well, so it looks, I guess it looks looks like I know where I'm going now mm-hmm. and I remember Joey calling me um or you know he sent me a voice note and Joey never sends voice notes unless it's something like really good or really bad, right? I don't want him sending voice notes because then my anxiety goes to the roof. It means I either did something <laughs> or it is good, but I was like, I haven't done anything lately, so it must be something bad, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and essentially what the voice note was saying, and we ended up having calls and talking and all that. It was just like, yo, dude, like I, I know the competitor in you. Like you're just like, hey, I just want to just mm-hmm. go up against the best. I want to go beat Russ and all this other stuff. I just came off a great 2020 Raw Nationals where I came in second. Yeah. He's like, but I think there's, I, I think there's a better path for you, right? I, I think there's more opportunity for you um, if you take this route, right? And he started going through like a number of different things. And I won't like kind of go through everything, but, yeah. and it literally took him a week of like talking to me. I talked to SD, like I, me and Pete were having conversations. Like it took a week uh, for me to separate my powerlifting success from one individual. Uh, right. Cause he's like, when I stepped in the sport, it was Russ and Sean and Spokehaven competing mm-hmm. for nationals. And they were already like the best guys. Like I started in the sport and they were already there. And I'm just, all right, cool. In order to be a good 83, I got to go catch and beat them. Right. Exactly. And so for so long, there was this, there, there was almost this, this like undeniable connection between being a top 83 and having to go through them in order to do it. And then when this kind of just separated from it, it was it was this very weird kind of like, like it's hard, almost hard to explain. There's like weird, um, just 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 shift in energy and 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 everything there. And so it literally took him a week to convince me. And I was like, you want to know what? Like I I understand what you're saying and where you're going. I can always come back. He can yeah. always come back. There's always another way. But sometimes I think I always say, don't sacrifice what you want most for what you want right now. And I always wanted to be a world champion. I always wanted to, you know, do bigger things, travel the world, the whole nine yards. Um, and also just from like a speaking standpoint, like I st- wanted to start a public speaking business off of a world championship. And so some of the bigger goals I had, it helped me more, right, to do international um, and experience that. And so most people don't know that story. They're just like, oh, don't no. he just like ran or whatever the case may be. And, I didn't know that. You either. know. Yeah, and I, I don't really talk too much about all of it. Um, but really, it 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 was Joey's idea um, as the flex coach and as both our coaches. And he's like, "Yo, dude, like, I mean, you have time. Like, he's not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Why? Why not? Right? Why wouldn't you?" Um, and so that took a while for me to accept and separate the two. Um, and so to get to the point, like, so most people don't know that story. So they're just like, "Oh, he's running," or this and the third. It's mm-hmm. people have a very short memory, so they forget that Russ is the only eighty-three in the US that I've never beaten on a head to head matchup. So they're saying that, you know, they talk about Sean or Angelo or Deuce or whatever the case may be. And, you know, just recent events and all of that, they almost forget that, you know, I have totaled a 22.5 on the platform in nationals with all those guys there. Um, And so I think this would kind of get that monkey off of my back um, with, you know, just some of the things that have been said, like in the shadows and and, and like in in passing or whatever the case may be. And kind of set that tone and just say, hey, like, no matter where I am, I'm still there. Um, and, you know, you're still going to have to respect the fact that, you know, I'm one of the top in the game. And so, yeah, uh, that would that would mean the world to me from a competitive standpoint. And then obviously, like Russ, as my teammate, you know, I can shoot him a text like, hey, yo, bro, I mm-hmm. have to come back over. You know, we have to do that dance now. You know, I took your, <laughs> took your spot. You can't go to 90 now. You got you to yeah. stick around a little bit longer. Um, just, you know, a friendly rivalry there. Um, and then from a business standpoint, I mean, it just, you know, it opens up opportunities, right? whether it be for sponsorships, whether it be for, you know, just longevity in the sport and being able to actually reap, you know, better monetary benefits from a sport that we spend, you know, 365 days training for, whether it yeah. be in the gym or whether it be watching your nutrition and your sleep and all this other stuff. And so 
Um, it, it means a lot from a number of different facets. And there's a lot of things that are happening behind the scenes that I'm actually working on that rely on a lot of my performances. Um, mm-hmm. And so uh, I'm, I'm excited for it because I feel ready for the moment. Um, and when it all comes to fruition, I, I, I think it, it'll be a beautiful thing once it all does. So, I mean, there, there's so many facets to it and I can kind of ramble on and on about it, but yeah. yeah it, well, I mean, I mean, kind of what I'm getting at with, with that question was about like, you know, the shoes that you made where, you know, um, in the past, you, your coach has coached John Hack at 83 and you've gone against exactly. Brett Gibbs and then you had Russ and you already have filled those shoes by going and winning the world championship. So mm-hmm. there's really nothing left, like as far as resume is concerned, the only thing left now is to defend it and get two of them, you know, and then get three of them. And then you have more than Russ. But I mean, of course, people are always going to look also at that number 841. Exactly. And so, I mean, you've kind of, you've, you've filled the shoes as far as becoming a world champion, but that number is still sitting there. So I think for you to check that off, will be sort of like, okay, now the history books are basically complete. And it's just a matter of how how long can I do this for? How many of those world championships can I win? And can I can I entice Russ to come back and give me a head to head, you know, battle? And we'll see. Yeah. We'll see where that rivalry may go. You know, yeah, I mean that's my that's my biggest regret. Man. Yeah. I mean not not my biggest regret. That's my biggest fear is that we won't get to go up against each other again. And so this, you know, could be an opportunity that some yeah. way, somehow we can make those stars align. And yeah, to your point, I mean, John Hacks, the, the Brett Gibbs, the Russell mm-hmm. Orhees, like the, yep. those names are going to last in powerlifting. I wouldn't say forever because nobody lasts forever, but as yeah. long as powerlifting, you know, as long as any other name in powerlifting. And so Absolutely. to have your name to be able to be inserted within that conversation, I mean, dude, I mean, John yeah. Hack, Brett Gibbs, Russ, like they're, dude. They're, they, they've changed Bill the Andy sports. Wallace. For sure. You're, yeah, you're so. already there. You're already there, yeah. man. <laughs> got, got to make that stamp and got to make that name. So hopefully mm-hmm. uh, end up on the Rushmore of 83 somewhere. <laughs> of course, of course. And I think I think definitely um, whatever number you put up at Sheffield, we know it's going to be your biggest total ever. Um, whether where exactly it falls, you know, we'll leave that up to the the mystery and the excitement. Uh, people got to tune in and watch to see what happens. Um, but we, we know it's going to be your biggest total ever and we know it's going to be massive and it's going to be amazing and you're going to solidify yourself as one of the greatest 83s of all time and you're still young and it's you're not done i mean sheffield is two weeks out but then after that we've got worlds in malta and then we run it back again next year so i mean there's a lot there's a lot of time for delaney wallace to put add to that 841 and so we'll see but you said 861 so we're going to hold you to that <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and absolutely. we'll see we'll see i mean if you come anywhere near that man i love the uh back and forth with you and ryan this week where you said <laughs> he said something like if you hit the world record i'm gonna die and you said better buy life insurance bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i, man, I mean right right ryan knows i'm good for it um mm-hmm. almost every time i tell him i'm gonna do something it ends up coming to fruition and so he uh yeah. <laughs> he he knows if i if i say it there's something that happened in back here that uh that i have an ace up my sleeve so it's gonna be good i love ryan yeah no he's amazing he's my hero in the sport you know um i'm definitely wouldn't be here without him so um you're getting back to sheffield stuff um who's going over there with you um for my team or, or personally? Just all, everyone. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, it's the Flex family. So, you have, you know, Tina, Joey. You have uh, Mikey and Jesus and Amanda and Keiko mm-hmm. and, and uh, Nina and, and that whole crew. Um, and then, personally, I was really lucky that uh, my sister, who wasn't able to go to South Africa for Worlds, she's actually flying out to the U.K., Um, she got a couple of days out of grad school because she's studying like microbiology she's like the smart one of the family um (laughs) i remember you telling me yeah so she gets to see it and then my mom's actually going to fly out too um so i get to kind of you know share that experience with them dad couldn't make it out of work this time um uh, but Uh it's okay that's that's why it's my job to uh to win this thing so then i can uh go to italy and then everybody can come through on that one Um, a little bit more time to plan so um yeah yeah, it's going to be a good like it's going to be a nice it's going to be nice because although it's a foreign event and really it's like every man for himself, there's a lot of familiar faces that are with us. I mean, like 20, yeah. I think like what 25% of the Sheffield people are flex athletes. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that there's just that family camaraderie that comes with it. And then also to be blessed and fortunate that some of my family can physically be there as well. 
um, it, it's, it's just a, such a blessing. So yeah, yeah I I, I'll, I'll have a little bit of a crowd. I think six of the nine, uh, Americans, you know, are, are flex. And then, I mean, of course there's, there's nine Americans in the, in the field. Um, I know Mike Z is going to be there, you know, our uh, U S national team head coach and stuff. Mm -hmm. There'll be some other power of America people there. So, I mean, it'll definitely feel like, uh, a team USA coming in real strong there in the warm up room. So that'll be fun. But I mean, I just, I love the, st the story, like, cause I, your parents were there in Austin, you know, first time I met you, your parents were there yeah. with you in South Africa. Um, and so really cool that your, your sister's now getting in on the action. And then, you know, of course your mom hasn't missed a, a meet yet, it seems. And then you can have the family trip to Malta, you know, and go visit this like a exotic Italian Island type place, you know, and, and, you know, right off into the sunset. So that's awesome. Um, you mentioned before, so let's, we're just going to dig into these numbers a little bit deeper. Um, so I'm looking through your YouTube and I'm trying to find it, by the way, you know, Delaney has a YouTube, so make sure you follow him over there. Make sure you subscribe. Um, and, and I'm looking, trying to, I'm, I'm looking through all your Instagram, trying to find some numbers. And the only thing I have is a deadlift single at 325, um, 716 pounds. Your comp best is 322. Uh, so deadlift is, and it looked it looked fast, like very fast. Um, yeah. so it didn't look like a third attempt by any stretch of the imagination. So, uh, all you're famous for not posting and you talked about it in the SPD video. Um, you can talk about it again, but can we assume that your bench and your squat are on as on point as your deadlift right now? Um, or are you a deadlift I'm gonna, specialist? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no. Okay. <laughs> um, and the reason I'm going to say no is that, um, as of recently, if, if we're talking about just progression, my deadlift, mm -hmm. um, I think it's in one of my YouTube videos. I actually said that I was like, yeah, I'm a deadlift specialist. Now, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you did. It's, it, when I, when I, when I post up a top single and it's like seven Oh five or that seven sixteen or whatever the case may be. And I, and I say at last warm up, that's not like a, a mm -hmm. funny, like tagline where I'm saying, Oh, it moved fast. Like it's actually legitimately the last warm up. There's just one more after that that y'all didn't get to see, and so yeah, um, yeah. The deadlift is really blown up, and so I think out of all of my three lifts, that one is the one that I'm most excited for, mm -hmm. um, just because of the progression. Like I'm, I'm tired of being in like that top five range of like the, in the beginning of the deadlifts, where like you know the lower the deadlifts are pulled, and so now I feel like mm -hmm. I can kind of deadlift with the best of them. So, um, but bench is on point, um, and squat is on point as well, and so. Uh, I wouldn't say they're as on point as deadlift because deadlift has just been a massive jump. Um, mm -hmm. I actually did uh, end up hitting a uh, uh, a pretty nice like what is it in kilos? I don't know in kilos, but a, a nice like seven forty nine dead. Um, oh, wow! A few weeks ago, um, and so yeah, with, with with that no no forty pound PRs on squat and bench. I'm uh, lucky for the competition this time around, but coming soon. <laughs> Uh, but ben bench is on, on point and should be a huge PR for me day. Um, no PRs in the gym, but PR for me day. Um, and then squat, the same thing. It's just a uh, more efficient and I feel, um, uh, you know, more consistent on that. So, uh, it's, it's extremely exciting. Extremely Dude. Exciting. I mean, yeah. I mean, I get to see a little bit here and there, so I don't want to say anything about your numbers, but, um, that, that 749 that you just mentioned, um, that that comes out to 340 in kilos and mm -hmm. if we're talking about yet yeah, your all-time best i mean you're talking about putting 20 keys on your deadlift is what it sounds like and yeah. if if your bench and your squat are just you know simply progressing along you know five keys whatever something small like that yeah man i can see the 860 in your future um so <laughs> we'll see if it comes on the day you know you got to have a great day exactly but, um Certainly that 841 is like very much on the table just with, if you just do your 822 plus your new, your 20 keys on deadlift, boom, you're right there, you know? Yeah. So, uh, damn dude, this is exciting. Um, so tell us about like, so you've, you become a deadlift specialist now, <laughs> uh, you, you pulled out a big dead. Um, does that, does that come back to what happened at worlds in 2022? Um, with Ina having this like crazy big deadlift and, and, you know, like in football, you always see like, okay, like 
Chiefs got Mahomes. Now every other team in the AFC has got to go get a, a quarterback to match, you know, and got to put get an mm-hmm. offense to match. So it's like a similar kind of thing where it's like, okay, you know, kind of shocked me a little bit with this deadlift, which we all knew he has massive deadlift. Yeah. Um, but you kind of saw that weapon and then think, hey, maybe, maybe I maybe Delaney needs to have a little bit of a deadlift now. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like, so and it definitely woke me up. Um, I, I knew very much so about him prior he's a flex athlete as well yeah um and so like i i knew that something was was there and i think it was less his deadlift specifically i think that was like the straw that broke the camel's back just because there is that moment in time where you're like oh my god like i might i might have let this i might have let this opportunity slip through my fingers right yeah um but it was more so just looking at my performance as a whole and being extremely frustrated with the outcome mm-hmm. um, and how it happened, right? Mm-hmm. Win- winning is great, right? The bare minimum was done, but not the way that I wanted to. Mm-hmm. And so I just started to dissect literally everything I was doing. I'm talking squat, I'm talking bench, I'm talking, I, like everything got dissected. Mm-hmm. And I think deadlift was the one that had the most work that needed to be done. It's always had the most work, right? Mm-hmm. I, I'm fortunate enough that I don't rely on one single lift. Like I, I'll place in yeah. the top three in every single one pretty much. Yeah. Um, but that lift was always the one where I'm like, yo, like I'm squatting this, I'm doing whatever. And this, this dude over here, like he's squatting like a hundred pounds less, but he's deadlifting more. How, how is this mm-hmm. possible? It's, it must be something that I'm doing wrong. Um, and so just refining technique, refining form again and again and again and again and again. And when I say, I just, I literally just woke up one day and, you know, I went from, a deadlift single that was kind of consistently around like 660, 672 on any given day mm-hmm. to ju- I just woke up and like that seven plus thing just happened. Right. And mm-hmm. I think that's the beauty of like RPE and Joey's coaching and things of that nature. It's just like, Hey, you don't know when it's going to break, but eventually that wall or that barrier is going to break. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you just take advantage of it when you will. And, and, and now you know what it feels like to be in the right position to, to, to have your muscles fire in the way it needs to fire um, but yeah, I mean, like, and it definitely, that was the straw that kind of broke the camel's mm-hmm. back. Like, no, no, they're like, I can't afford to be sloppy. Mm-hmm. I need to have everything. Um, and I want to have everything. And yeah, it was just, you know, finally having a bit of an off season instead of going back to back meets, um, uh, you know, just gave me that time to work on it a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, Hey, all these guys got this sort of ACE card up their sleeve on deadlift. I need my ACE card as well. You know, um, just for these moments like this, I mean, you, you, like you said, it's, it's a little bit unfortunate when it comes to Sheffield, as far as you're very well-rounded in all three, you're like top five in all three lifts. And so, and one of the things with Sheffield for people that don't know is that you get paid for breaking individual lift world records as well. And that's going to be difficult because Ina has, has put that world record, like very far out of reach on the deadlift, but you're actually pretty, you're not far off on, on squat and bench. I mean, you're like best all time, uh, looking at open powerlifting is like around 18 keys off, um, on squat and bench. But I mean, it's not, it's not out of reason you know i mean deadlift is like you know definitely with with ina being there it's like deadlift is kind of like out of reason you know um let's see what does he have it set at it's 362.5 i mean even there you 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 know you basically you pulled a 340 recently so you're only like 22 keys off of that but still 20 keys is a lot in powerlifting but still i mean i don't know maybe are of the three which one you think you'll be the closest at breaking Oh, you're, you're muted or, or, uh, your audio went out. Oh, sorry. Seven hundred. There you go. Um, I think bench is 100% out of, out of the question. I don't okay. think I'm getting that, that 485 bench, uh, whatever it is in kilos, mm-hmm. um, as of yet. Um, I do see like a good solid, strong mid, um, uh, 400 bench, but not enough to break the record. Mm-hmm. Um, depending on the day and depending on how I peak, um, the squat at, at it's like, it's like, 705 ish 320 yeah um yeah 320 705 ish mm-hmm. it's i need to be perfect but it's not out of the question right exactly um, it's, it's like, just a matter of hey do we do we want to take that shot how well does that second attempt move can you lock it in um and then deadlift 
A deadlift, honestly, I think it, it, it depends on the day, right? You never know, like, if squat goes perfectly, bench goes perfectly, and then we just get a yellow deadlift. Mm-hmm. I mean, even going back to Enna, you know, he almost pulled 850 um, yeah. after that, that, that 799 that he did. And, I mean, we, yeah. I, I know I went to his last meet, and I think he just pulled, like, 800 again. He wasn't really close to that 850. So sometimes just that adrenaline and that mm-hmm. need, that knowing that, hey, you need this or you want this in that moment gives you strength that otherwise you might not be able to recruit from yourself. And so um, I'd say squat, I'm probably the closest at bench is definitely out of reach and deadlift. If I do, then, you know, I'll be on the, on the floor praising God. Um, (laughs) But uh, it's the one unfortunate thing to your, to your point. Um, The positive for me is I'm extremely well-rounded. So if something goes wrong on any lift, I can make up for it. Absolutely. Um, But the negative thing is, you know, when it's a competition that's breaking world records, Really, the only one that I'm extremely confident about is the is the total record, the total. and everything else is kind of a reach. I, I always go back to the 2020 Nationals piece um, with you know, me, Sean, Russ, Angelo, everybody. Yeah. On that meet, there were five world records broken at mm-hmm. 83 that day, mm-hmm. and I broke not a single one of them, but still came in second. Right? Jamal yep. broke the squat, then Russ took it. Um, uh, Angelo had the deadlift. Um, Sean had the bench. Um, Russ took the total, and I was nowhere close to any of them. On, yeah. the, on the record side, but and still ended up coming in second. And so it's just an interesting dynamic for me. Um, that part doesn't play out in my favor, but I mean, at the end of the day, the only thing that people care about is the total. Well, exactly. I mean, the total, I mean, that's what powerlifting is about is the total. Yeah. It just happens to be that this meet in particular, they're scoring it this way. And it, exactly. it definitely kind of lends its hands, you know, a little bit to people who are like specialists in one event and then also good at total as well. But no, I mean, like you nailed it. You're as far as powerlifting is concerned and being in a straight up powerlifting competition, like going to worlds, you're an amazing competitor in that sense, because you're so well-rounded and we have very few of those. And actually Russ is one who comes to mind. That's pretty well-rounded. Brett Gibbs was one that's pretty well-rounded and John Hack was pretty well-rounded, right? Like, you don't think of him as being like a a specific, like a deadlift specialist or anything. So, so, I mean, some of the greatest of all time are very well-rounded like this. And like you said, it's great because if one's off or you miss a lift or something that happens, it's like, doesn't matter. Cause I'm, I'm still really strong in, in the other two as well. So, um, all right, well, let's talk a little bit about worlds 2022 and you know, this like ultimate drama that you had with Ina in the end, um, just yeah. kind of start off by telling us like, how were you feeling on the day itself? Like, did you feel strong when you're warming up? Did you feel good when you woke up that day and you're going into a competition? Were you feeling a hundred percent as far as like, being banged up and anything like that yeah i mean we're always banged up mm-hmm. um every every power lifter every athlete on the face of earth is, is banged up there they deal with something um but as far as like worse injuries or worse kind of feelings that i've had from an injury standpoint definitely not the worst so mm-hmm. um overall i felt good like i felt good i felt ready um and and really what happened what kind of created this almost spiral if you will was was squat was my third squat right i was yeah. feeling really strong going in the squats hit my second attempt and i get to my third and mind you i wanted more on my third squat like mm-hmm. I, I wanted my third squat i think we ended up just putting in like a high like 660 ish um, 2.5 yeah uh, yeah and like i wanted to go like 672 680 something mm-hmm. and it and i just missed and even to this day i just don't know why i missed i just missed right mm-hmm. um just flat off strength and it really surprised me, um, but it, it put us in a position where, okay, hey, you're at world. You can't afford to go seven for nine or six for nine. Mm-hmm. Let's be extremely conservative on bench. Um, so we didn't really push bench too far or as far as we wanted to, just so yeah. we didn't even kind of creep up on um, baby missing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, it was about 10 I pounds, mean, 10 pounds off your best. Exactly. Uh, right. And it was more so a, not a, a strength thing. It was more so just like a competitive strategic piece. Just yes. hit your lifts uh, on that front, which frustrated me on that end. Cause it, you know, again, it took more pounds off the total, um, but by choice. Um, and then it gets to the third deadlift and I'm like, okay, cool. In my, in my mind, I knew that and I knew some of the other guys were there, but everybody was hyping up Tim Madagani. Right. Like oh, yeah. that was the guy, that was the guy to beat. It was us versus New Zealand again. Like, he, mm-hmm. our totals, our best totals that were relatively the same, um, uh, you know, at locals or at national meets. And, and so like, we're watching him and we're like, at this point in time, he's just too far away. He missed like two squad attempts. He had like a, not, not the best day as well. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so he's, they're just like, yo, hit this third deadlift. Boom, boom, boom. We're going to be walking out of here. You're going to be world champion. Everything's good. And so deadlifts are flying in the back room. I'm like, yeah, let's go. This is the third. Um, and I get to my third deadlift. I feel good. I feel strong. Um, and honestly, I swear to God, I thought I, I thought I got it. Right. I'm like, boom, I put the deadlift down. I'm walking back. I'm waiting for the green light so I can turn or white light so I can turn over to the coaches and be like, yeah, it's finally done. And then I see the three reds and I'm like, I'm like shocked. I'm like, I'm just like, what could have possibly happened? Mm-hmm. Um, and so they called me for, I think it was my left knee that they called me for. And like in that moment, I just had that sick feeling to my stomach because I was like, I don't know what it is, but I know that something is wrong. Like I know that as a competitor, you cannot go seven for nine, especially on the largest stage and expect that no, like nothing, like there's no repercussions to that. I just yeah. don't know where it's coming from. Start crunching the numbers and everything like that. And um, they're like, no, Tim's too far away. And my boy um, from Great Britain, he's too far away. Um, Jerns. And I'm just, yeah, Jerns. Yeah, I don't know why I blanked on his name. Don't, don't hate me, bro. Um, it's all and, and I get to, I, we see Anna's name and I'm just like, he's going he's gonna to try to pull for the win. Mind you, like he's, he was still, his attempt was still like 15 keys under what it was supposed to be. Yeah. And I remember talking to the U.S. team coach and I'm just like, no, nah, something's wrong. It's bad. And I remember in that moment, he's like, dude, understand that he literally has to pull the earth to beat yeah. you at this point. And I was just like, he's going to try to do it. I looked at him dead in his face like, he's going to try to do it. That was he's Mike like, Z? Yeah, Mike Z. I'm just like, he's yeah. going to try to do it. He's like, dude, it's 100 pounds over the current world record. With the one he just broke, he like I was just like I would do it if I was him. Like if that was it, like if that was if if deadlift is my specialty, yeah. And you're telling me that my attempt is only 15 more keys away from what I need to do, and I'm just gonna throw the 15 on and 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 let it ride. Like I'm gonna I, yeah. I want to die by my sword. Like yeah. I would do it. So I know that he would do it. Literally 30 seconds later, a tip change and like it's just chaos in the back room. Everybody's flooding to the front. Yeah. Um, and I'm just in the back by myself, just like that minute felt like hours. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we, we, we know the story now he ended up trying to pull it came, came closer than I wanted him to. Um, but thank God he missed. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, so like he, in, you know, I, by the grace of God, like I kind of got out of there alive, and, um, yeah. was able to come back a world champion. Um, yeah. but it was, it was, a, it was a frustrating kind of end. Um, I usually don't, go seven for nine at me maybe yeah. it's like an eight for nine type of deal if we're trying to pull for something mm-hmm. and so like it was uh it, it was frustrating because it was it didn't showcase the prep i had um mm-hmm. and it goes back to like what i say about why like part of the reasons why i don't post certain lifts that lack of gratification that i got for my training and for my performance i want to say fueled this prep more than anything else because i mean like i'm like dude like I've hit 700 in a squat in the gym and nobody saw it because I didn't mm-hmm. post it. I, I've benched, you know, high mid fours in the gym and nobody's seen it. I've deadlifted this in the gym. Nobody's seen it. And, and it's my choice, right? I'm not complaining about it. And it's like, yeah. so I see all the backlash from my performance and I see all the critique and all of this. And that was the exact reason why I have this whole piece of like not posting certain things because that fueled me so much because it's like, yo, like I, w- I want you to respect my total. I want you to respect my lift. I, I want that gratification. I want that love, right? That just every human desires. It's just like a kind of a basic yeah, human need. And the course. only way that I can get it is by performing on the platform, yeah, not by it. showing you some YOLO lift in my gym when yeah. I'm 10 pounds overweight and it doesn't really matter. And all the variables are in my favor. I want it on the actual day. And so that really fueled my prep this meet because I'm like, yeah, I get nine attempts to yeah. write that wrong. I get nine attempts to set my name in the history books. I get nine attempts to shut that noise up and, and shut it down. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously the whole added kind of piece of the Carpino score and nationals, if I don't go, then I might not go to Worlds. And now you roll the dice and this, yep. and th- there's just so many pieces to that puzzle that yeah. just start to just like, just swirl. And it's, it's enough to make any person go insane. Yeah. Um, but I'm telling you, man, and I, we might get into it, we might not. Um, I was as close to signing up for powerlifting American nationals. Like I literally had my credit card information on the thing. Oh, um, okay. and I was, I was, th- I was thinking about signing up just so I had the ability to compete if I wanted to maybe show up. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, it it like, all worked I'm, out, man. I mean, it, and I'm telling you, on the last day, on the last day that you were able to sign up, I remember uh -huh. just sitting at my computer, and it felt like maybe like 30 minutes, like deciding, like, am I going to do this or not? Wow. And there was just this feeling that I got, and I can't explain it. I'm not one of those guys that are like into crystals and the whole nine yards, but like yeah, I, yeah. I, it was a spirit. It literally, it felt like the spiritual feeling, and it was just like the the stage is already set. Let it let it go. Like as Gavin would say, burn your ships, right? Um, yep. burn your ships. Yeah. Go to Sheffield and just let it let it all hang there. And I I just I just remember you know deleting the credit card information, closing out the tab, and I'm just like, you want to know this is out of my hands. I'm going to do what I'm I'm here to do. And I guess by by the grace of God, it all worked out in my favor. And it just feels like there's this energy shift. Yeah. Where like just the tides of everything are just starting to like kind of flow in a direction that it's just saying, hey, it's your time. And so um it was a very interesting thing it was a scary thing um because yeah. you know like i mean i expected deuce to 100 percent hit that total right yeah. he, he's yeah. he was right around the corner of it our, our best totals are not far off from each other yeah. um and again like it was just grace of god uh they worked out in my favor and now i have a chance to rebuttal you know yeah man i mean everything's coming up delaney uh like you said the grace of god a couple times now um like it world's by the grace of god Anna didn't pull that lift and then you know by the grace of god the table is now set for all the Sheffield athletes too. I mean, that was something that obviously as a team at power in America, we spent a lot, a lot, a lot of late nights, me and Mike Z talking about how we're going to handle the fact that we have Sheffield within four weeks of our nationals and everything. And, and, um, we ultimately got the outcome, you know, that we wanted. And then, mm -hmm. and then, you know, the, the chips were where they were and the athletes at nationals had their chance to come and claim their, claim their, you know, shot on the team and their spot on the U S national team. But, you know, they ended up there's six spots and there's six athletes on the men's side at Sheffield that can possibly, you know, take those spots. So I think everything ended up working out, but, um, just to go back to a point that you were making about, you know, you don't post a lot. And so really the most important thing. And I think this is a great attitude because, we know, we all know a lot, all the gym lifts, like you said, you're not, you're not at the right body weight. You're not doing them to spec. You're not doing it with the refs. You're not doing it under the bright lights. You're not, you know, there's a whole bunch of things that happen at a meet where like, you don't get to decide when you go lift, you know, it's like you're yeah. put in an order and then you got to go lift. You got to suddenly go to the bathroom or something like that too bad. You know what I mean? You got to go lift. Whereas you're in your own home gym, all this stuff, like it's, it's way easier. So I mean, don't let anyone, you, I, obviously, you know, that that's why you do, you are the way you are and you don't post and you save it for the platform because really that's all that matters. But, um, exactly. just looking at your previous five meets before that you had only missed three lifts in five meets. Mm -hmm. Um, so for you to miss two in one meet, that's an anomaly for sure. And that's, that's something, that's something that you're definitely going to correct and, you know, go nine for nine or, or eight for nine or whatever um, Sheffield and beyond and put up a much bigger toll than, than what you had there. So, um, but just, um, the thought process there, like when you said you're talking about, we're going to take a little bit off of bench. Is that Mike Z that you're talking to in the warm up room, Mike Z and Rodney, or are you talking to Joey? How was that? Yeah. So, so Joey was in contact with Mike Z and all of them. So Joey okay. was able to communicate certain numbers and, and stuff like that. Um, and so they, you know, they had their conversations, um, and to be honest with you, I, a majority of my lifts, I didn't know what was on the bar um, okay. just because like Mike and Joey were talking because Joey couldn't be there. Um, and it was one of those things just like, just lift the weight. And if you lift it, then you'll win, you know? Mm -hmm. And I really didn't have time to like argue and see what's this, what's that. But, you know, there was a couple of times when I'm on the platform and like, I remember like squat, I was like, damn, this wasn't as much as I wanted to hit or I was yeah. walking out on bench and I'm just like, this doesn't look like the number that I wanted. Like, damn, like this is what happened. And so you're frustrated <laughs> about that. Like you, you I, I, I might not know kilos and tell you the exact kilo, but I, I know what the colors look like. I, yeah. I know the color combos, right? Yeah. And so I'm looking at it and I'm like, man, all right. Um, but yeah, it was more so just, uh, you know, conversations that Joey and, and, and Mike C had from a competitive standpoint. Um, and at the end of the day, it was just, hey, we're going to do what we need to do to win. That's, yeah. that's the, that's the process. That's the goal. That's the main reason why we're here. Mm -hmm. Every, all the ancillary benefits, totals, records, whatever come after, but you, you play to win the game, right? Then yeah. that's it. Right. Yep. Um, the Super Bowl wasn't necessarily the best game in the first half. Right. And yep. then all of a sudden the second half and you know, your boys come out and they, they, they take the W yep. um, you play to win the game. 
and you can yeah. complain and critique it later. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to get the job done. And so, you know, that was kind of how that unfolded on that. Yeah, part. man. And, and Hey, job well done. You got the dub. I mean, 802 was all you needed. And so, and actually, I mean, you, uh, let me pull this up. You won by a lot. I mean, you, you won by, um, something like, you know, 15 kilos over second place over Jerns, And then Ina, you beat him by 22 and a half kilos. I mean, so, mm -hmm. I mean, you put up, you put up a pretty strong dub there. Like, like a lot, a lot, you, you didn't even actually need like your second deadlift probably. Um, if we're, if we're going to be honest about it. So, um, but anyway, that was, you know, great performance, man. And, and definitely the number like Matt Gary has a saying, Matt Gary is like the guru of all like game day coaching. And I, I'm reading his book right now. So I got it all his words in my head and stuff, okay. but he's always saying like, you know, there's only one day you can become a world champion. You can hit a PR 364 days out of the year, you know, mm -hmm. PR and PR your total and training and whatnot, or at a, you can go sign up for a local meet if you want to bust out a huge PR total or something like that. But there's only one day you can become a world champ and that's, you know, and you handle business and the same thing goes with nationals. You know, it's only one day you can be a national champ. That's not the day to be trying to hit PRs and stuff. If it comes, it comes um, yeah. through the course of competition, but it's, that's not the goal. So, but now with Sheffield, <clears throat> that is the goal, right? I mean, yeah. we are going to see you <laughs> kind of go all out. There's really no, <clears throat> there's no placing as far as weight classes are concerned or anything like this. So it's going to be fun. And, and then, oh, not to mention, it's like the biggest stage, the most money, you know? So what a, what a time to be alive, man. Like what an opportunity for you. Absolutely, man. Like if you had told me three or you know, four years ago or five years ago, when I started, this would be the, uh, the outcome so quick. Um, yeah. uh, might not have believed you, but, uh, yeah. it's, it's a blessing to be here. Um, super, super excited for it. Um, man, you have, you have no idea, um, like just how I'm feeling. Body weight is down. Um, you know, lifting is up, like body composition has changed, technique has been perfected. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I just feel so confident going into this meet and I'm just so excited, so grateful. And, uh, hopefully, uh, when, when, when it's all said and done, we'll recap this thing and you, and you say, Hey, Delaney, you were right. You know? Yeah, you right. absolutely. <laughs> hey, I believed in you from day one. So, um, but, uh, so speaking of the weight cut, I mean, is that something that has been an issue for you at all in the past or, or like, at PA Nats last year, was there a weight cut issue? So um, historically, no. There's really been no like real okay. weight cut issues. PA Nationals, I did do something like funky with my recomp, and I was like literally like holding back, throwing up um, uh, while I was like squatting, and so it was made it extremely hard for me like brace into the bar, even all the way to deadlifts. Actually, I was like like semi like half throwing up half the time, so mm -hmm. it was like kind of weird. So like I. I, I forgot what I ate. Yeah, yeah, but um, I, I can't kind of overdid it when it came to like the uh, like the recomp piece. But I yeah. mean, typically, and if, if I'm being transparent, typically by the time that I hit my cut, um, uh, to actually cut for the meat, I'm probably around like 188, 190, which okay. is really a simple like kind of seven pound water cut, um, or yeah. so, give or take. Yep. Um. This this turnaround, I've, I, again, I've been extremely on point with almost every detail, and I'm actually I'm actually under both of those numbers already. Okay. Um, so like okay. the water cut should not be an issue whatsoever. Um, but yeah, no, historically there's really been no issues. I just think that you know last year was a bit of an anomaly, and there's some things that needed to be cleaned up. We experimented with some pieces just because we did have the luxury, especially for PA Nationals, we had the luxury of kind of okay, let's experiment with this, experiment with that, see if we can get an extra this or an extra that out of this type mm -hmm. of methodology versus this. Um, and there really be no repercussions since we were almost one of the only people there. Yeah, um, yeah. So, but yeah, no, historically water cuts and, and all of that have been pretty, pretty easy and, and no problems there. And I think people, it's funny, people always assume that you're like heavier than you actually are. Like I've, I've heard like rumors from like group yeah. chats that like people are like Delaney's like 205 pounds. And I'm like, <laughs> I haven't been, I haven't been that since I've, played football like like what you mean uh -huh. like, i'm nowhere yeah. close to that but it's just funny um uh, there's a lot of speculation that goes on but now nah, we're, we're good here are you working with a nutritionist or anything yeah, alberto or... alberto nunez so anybody okay, that's that, right the guru man I, I i love him to death um he is such like his value is just like i can't even put a price tag on it like i'm smart enough at this point that from what he's taught me i can do my nutrition myself and be fine yeah, yeah. But there's something about like him, um, his cadence, his tone, right? The energy that he brings that is just so 
valuable that's just past the macros and what you should eat and all the other stuff that you 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 just feel extremely motivated you feel like you're in the right direction mm-hmm. um and and i just i i, I love him to death i've been working with him for i want to say like three or four years now and i mean i i couldn't imagine um working with anybody else he, he's just a guru and he's helped me be, um, uh, that's great. so tremendously and I mean, being a little closer to your competition weight while training and being able to kind of, that gives you a much better gauge on where your lifts are, you know, yeah. um, as a far, as opposed to, like you were saying before, it's like sometimes people hit PRs and stuff, but they're way over their body weight of, of what they're going to compete in. So that makes it difficult for calling attempts on, on game day, because, you know, you see these numbers that you were hitting in the gym and then it's like, but there's very difficult to pull those off when you're having to cut like 20 pounds or something, you know? So yeah, yeah. Ne- never been a 20 pound cut on my end. That that would be insane. I just go up at that point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, I got one more serious question, then I'll bust out like a bunch of rapid fire, like fun questions. But the last serious cool. question is just what does it mean to you to have USA across the chest, you know, when you're competing on a big stage like Sheffield or Worlds? Um, just like it's just an honor to be honest with you. Like, like if you really, if you really think about it, right. Um, there are sports that are way bigger than powerlifting that they do not have the opportunity to wear a Jersey where USA is across the chest, right? Yeah. You have the Bengals, you have the chiefs, you have the Ravens, you have this, you have that, that, and I've football is way bigger than powerlifting is and probably yeah. ever will be. Right. Mm-hmm. But they never have the honor of saying, Hey, like I'm a part of the U S national world team. Like I, 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 I'm not a part of that. Right. And so, um, there's a respect that just comes inherently with that. Like somebody sees a picture on my Instagram or if I, I was at a networking event for work and somebody saw a picture of me with that all across my chest and yeah. it, it literally, somebody introduced me to another person, both of which I've never met before solely because of this thing that has nothing to do with my job, but because there's just an, this inherent respect yep. for somebody that has the USA across your chest. And so, um, I, I'm just so grateful. It, it's just, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an honor. Um, it's something that can just never be taken from you. And you'll just always have that, you know, behind. And I, I always tell this story about the world championship. There's two things that I remember about it. One had to do with competition. And one just had to do with being able to meet a bunch of different people from different parts of the world. Um, but when you, the competition is done, mm-hmm. right? They're calling all the contestants up to the front and you guys have to stand in that line and they're calling your name, third place, blah, 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 from X. Second place, blah, 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 from X. Then you finally get to your name. It's just that Delaney Wallace from Team USA, right? Yeah. And you have like the cameras just dead in your face, right? And, yeah. and you know, your family's in the crowd and you start hearing the national anthem play in the background, right? That yeah. is something that you, it's a feeling you can't put into words. And I'm not an extremely emotional person from the part that like, I just cry every time I see a movie, but like, I'm, I was almost fighting back tears because mm-hmm. it's almost an overwhelming feeling. Cause for the first time you realize that it's no longer you against the world. Like you feel like it's you against the world the whole time. Cause mm-hmm. is literally you against all the hundred other 20 nations you're competing, but you hear the national anthem playing in the background is filling the auditorium with sound. Right. And you're just like, it's no longer me. Like this is this is the nation. This is this is the USA that I represent. That like I am standing here as a representation of the entire nation in this class, and it's just a feeling that I can't put into words. I've tried to so many times, and it, it's just overwhelming gratitude. And there are very few people in the world. Period. Athletes that are way more talented than me. Athletes that are way more gifted. Other sports that will never get to feel that kind of just, 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 just gratitude and that feeling that I, that I got a chance to feel, Mm -hmm. um, wearing a Jersey with team USA across your chest. You don't need an explanation. Mm -hmm. You say the Bengals, they're going to ask, Hey, did you start? Were you third string? Were you the play for the the team USA? It Mm -hmm. team USA. Yeah. Period. End of story. Like the, 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 the conversation stops there. There's just an automatic respect. And so, um, just extremely humbling, extremely grateful. Um, and yeah, that's, the, I guess that's what it means. And that's like Dude. kind of the feeling that goes around it. Crazy goosebumps over here, man. Like just hearing <laughs> you tell that story and just a f- little follow up when you were up there and they're playing the national anthem, were you able to see your parents in the crowd? Yeah. So my parents were front and center. 
Like, so we're, nice. we're a big sports family. I can probably count on one hand the amount of sporting events since birth that my, mm -hmm. like that one of my parents at least has not been there, right? Sometimes one of us, the other, because somebody has work or whatever. Yeah. Um, but somebody is always there and they were front and center right on the right side. Um, and they, I, I saw them, right. And you just see them just beaming with excitement and joy, you know, yeah, mom and dad, like, Hey, that's my, that's my, that's my baby boy. He, he, he did his thing. Right. Um, so yeah, yeah, I definitely saw them. Definitely man. saw them. <clears throat> that's a beautiful story, man. Um, so I couldn't be happier for you. Um, I wish I was there to like shake your parents' hands afterwards, you know, and just like, man, your boy made you proud and made our whole country proud, you know? Um, so man, that's, that's so badass. All right. I'll start crying if we talk about that too much more. Uh, <laughs> I am the guy that is like crying in every movie that my wife makes me watch. Um, so yeah, definitely like the Delaney Wallace special on Netflix. I'll be balling. But, uh, <laughs> Hopefully um, coming soon. Yeah, exactly. But okay. So for some quick hitters, um, first of all, how old are you right now? 28. 28. All right. Um, cause you can never tell on open power zine, like you got to do math with the birthdays and stuff. So, okay. 28 and, and when's your birthday? September 24th. So, end okay. Of the year. So we don't have to worry about you turning 29 until after, uh, worlds. So 28, yeah, yeah, yeah. the man yeah, is 28. Yeah, we can good. put it in all the captions. All right. Um, where'd you grow up? What's your hometown? Um, so I was born in the, the Silver Spring, Bowie, Maryland area, raised okay. in South Jersey, um, uh, Morristown, New Jersey from like pretty much like fifth grade. Um, uh, on until college. And then after college, I moved up here to Westchester, New York. And now I reside in Harrison, New York, here in Westchester. Okay. Um, uh, so that's like my little journey going up north. <laughs> all right. All right. What was your first sport? I mean, football, right? Uh, actually, no. My first sport was actually soccer. Um, okay. And I was actually a better soccer player than I was a football player. Um, but I just love football more. Um, and did you, did you play soccer then all the way into high school and stuff? I played soccer almost entirely up until i got to high school seventh eighth grade is when i switched over to football and my grandfather he's kenyan like literally fresh off the boat kenyan not like oh yeah like i have kenyan blood like i'm fresh off the boat i got here at 18 mm -hmm. um kenyan and i remember he was so upset that i i quit soccer to play football because like fo soccer football right is yeah. like that's that's a, a big part of their culture he, and yeah. uh um so yeah I, I used to play soccer i was actually a um a goalie and then also a striker I kind of like dual, dual threaded it there. Okay. Um, and I, I remember there's still newspaper clippings there somewhere. There's one season where I like literally averaged like five or six goals a game. <laughs> like, wow, wow. So we're doing it, doing a thing. And so some of the high school coaches were pretty pissed off that I, uh, <laughs> that I quit soccer and started playing football because they were already recruiting me over. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Yo, you made grandpa proud, but then, yeah, you broke his heart whenever you switched over to football, but that's yeah. all right. Yeah, I remember you telling that story too. Like, uh, just like your family in general was like kind of a little risk averse. They didn't want you playing football just from injuries and stuff like that. But it all yeah. ended up working out. So, um, what nicknames have you ever had growing up? Um, really, I think the only nickname that I really remember having was just like D Money. A lot of people uh -huh. called me that, all and right, that was like from like, yeah, that was from like a while ago. That was just like I don't know why that was the name, but. Like yeah. even from like 10 years old, people were just calling me D-Money and it kind of stuck. What does your family call you? They call you Delaney? Yeah, they just call me Delaney. Or yeah. they, is there any short? Do they call you like Laney or uh, or anything? The only person, the, there's only like a handful of people that call me Laney. Uh -huh. My college football coach, he sometimes used to call me Laney. And then like maybe a couple of random people here and there. But Laney never really, really stuck. Like people, that, people would say D-Money. Okay. And like if people that didn't even know each other, not like they heard somebody else say it, they're just like, oh, yo, D money. I, I guess like, you know, mm -hmm. it, I was built to, I was, I, I was born to be in finance, I guess, even before I was doing whatever, <laughs> right? Um, but only a handful of people said Laney. I don't know. It just never, okay. never stuck. And your parents, like at home, they just, they always call you Delaney, huh? Yeah, they just say Delaney. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> so uh, who's a person in powerlifting that you look up to the most? Or that you looked up to, like when you were coming up, like as inspiration. <clears throat> That's tough, because um, as as sentimental as I am, and, and and all of that, there's when it comes to like looking up to and idolizing people. Like example, mm -hmm. I love the Ravens. I think Lamar Jackson is a great athlete. If I see him, I might get his autograph, but I'm not fangirling. Although, like mm -hmm. I, I I love him. He's like he's a great talent. Yeah. Um, so looking up to it, it's, it's like interesting. Like I do admire people for different aspects. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I admire Joey for what he's been able to build from a coaching standpoint. 
Um, I admire Angelo and Enna for their ability to at my weight class pull weight that up until recently, I was like, yo, I don't even know how this is possible, right? Mm -hmm. um, I respect Sean Noriega for his ability to bench as much as he does at our weight class, as well as yeah. Hubbard, right? Now that I know more about the international scene before I just knew domestic, right? Yeah. Um, and then I respect Russ for his ability to day in and day out and meet in and meet out, perform at a high level, regardless of some of the things that are happening behind the scenes. And I've even talked to him before this, like on Russ's side, forget the lifting stuff. Like I know it's possible. I've seen athletes at like the highest level in the NFL and most powerlifters don't know if like football players or any other sport, like professional sport wanted to come into our sport and dominate oh, yeah. it. We're all screwed. Like, like, I, it's, like people's paradigm of thinking of what strong is, is very off, but I won't go on that tangent. Um, but I tell him, I'm like, yo, dude, it's not your strength or anything that impresses me. Um, his ability to build a business that he has built um, off the back of such a niche sport like powerlifting. Exactly. I respect the hell out of that because that is something that a lot of people can't do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We can all get strong as hell. You spend yeah. enough time and attention, do it long enough. That, that's fine. Like I, I've seen it all. It doesn't really impress me. I was like, all right, cool. You did it. I respect it, but I'm not like, oh. um, but that aspect of it on Russ's side, I, I respect the hell out of it. I've told him that to his face and all of that. Like, forget the lifting shit, man. Like, that's cool. Yeah. Like, all right, cool. But no, that, that, that's, um, that's super inspirational on that, on that front. And then I guess on the backside that not even a lifter anymore, at least I knew he used to, um, uh, six pack lap of that, um, what he's been able to build with King of the Lifts is also, uh, you know, for, as a businessman, cause I, I just have a business mind. Yeah. Um, I respect the hell out of that too. And I love it. Oh man. He's pushed our sport forward so much. Russ and, and Ryan, you know, they both, they both have, and, uh, dude, like you, you nailed on some of my heroes there too. Obviously Ryan, a big time hero for me. Um, so another one is what kind of music you listen to right now, man, if you, you never know what I'm going to be listening to when I'm in the gym, man. Like yeah. if I'm in that kind of mood, I'm bumping Ace Hood. Cause that's like my guy. Like I just, I'm just in the zone and I'm just ready to kill uh -huh. people. Um, if I'm in like a different kind of mood, I'll have some like salsa on and I'll be like dancing in the gym and like, exactly. they'll be like, yo, how's this dude just clocking six something for reps. And now he's like dancing salsa. Um, then I'll have something in between if I'm in like calm, chill mood and I'm really trying to just like vibe in the moment. Like I'll, there's been times I've been listening to like Frank Sinatra or something like, you know, like I'll be exactly. all over the place. You have the Drake, you have this and a third. Um, so it really just depends on the mood um, and, and what I'm doing, but it, it, it's kind of funny. I'll, I'll go from Ace Hood to Salsa to mm -hmm. Frank Sinatra to um, one thing that I listen to a lot is just like show tunes. Like, so the, um, the soundtracks to movies, there are okay. certain soundtracks that I just, I just like um, on that front. Um, so yeah, like I'm, I'm all over the place, man. I don't, I know. I, just, you know, I normally been asking people. Random. Yeah, I know. I've been normally been asking people their favorite rapper and stuff, but I know you listen to like a lot, a big variety of stuff, not just rap music. So, um, what kind of what what genre of movies you generally watch? Um, I love Marvel. I love Marvel and the whole superhero thing. Um, I and I think that's like from birth. Like from birth, for some reason, I was just this kid that thought that I was a superhero and I could do anything. And so mm -hmm. it's kind of always kind of transcended with me. So I love those type of movies. And then I also love those movies that um that make you think, right? Um, like mm -hmm. when it was like murder mystery movies or some or something where mm -hmm. you don't know what's actually happening until like the last five minutes of the movie. Uh, mm -hmm. Like a perfect example of that. Not sure if you saw it. It's a uh, movie old movie old time movie called the illusionist uh, um yeah and i love that movie right mm -hmm. long movie but like you literally don't know what's actually happening behind the scenes until the last like five minutes of the movie it all unravels you're just like wow i didn't even see that so yeah uh, i'd say those type of those type of things okay just a couple last ones what's your go-to like when you go out to eat at a nice restaurant like what, what's your favorite thing to get favorite food order while i'm not having to watch my weight yeah yeah Exactly. Okay. Like in your dream world, in the dream world, in the <laughs> dream can, world, I don't know. I'm, eat I'm, anything. I'm a, I'm a foodie. So like I, I can, I, I'll, I'll kill some sushi. That's that, that's, that's given. I, I will definitely kill some sushi. Um, I also, I, so Roos Chris, right. The yeah. steak there, I used growing up, like I had like those like very <laughs> stereotypical black parents that like, if there was any pink in the meat, then it was undercooked. So like they yeah. would overcook it and it was just leather. So yeah. I never had good steak until I actually got into like the corporate world. And I was like, oh, cool. So like, I'll go to Roos Chris and like the steak is cool, but like, I just love like seafood. So like, I like love their spicy shrimp. So mm -hmm. like I'll order, I'll order it for dessert if I could. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, 
and then um do 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 i mean really any like hibachi asian, anything like from like the asian culture japanese like chinese mm-hmm. food like i'm just like i'm there like you don't even have to ask any questions like i'm just there you don't even have to tell me what i'm eating like i'm i'm going mm-hmm. um that and seafood yeah I'm, I'm good to go and wherever i gotta go there has to be bread though there has okay, to be yeah. top tier good moist buttery bread like I, I just love bread. I could live off that's of bread. Right. That, that's why I, I remember you saying if, that if, before. If you could infuse protein into bread, I could literally eat it every single day for every meal and be perfectly fine. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Perfectly fine. And do you do you drink? Do you drink uh, alcohol, adult beverages? No. Nah. When you go nah. out, no, never. No. Nah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I think so... I've drunken like one drunk drink in my entire life. Okay. Wow. So man, if, disgu- you, if you guys disgusting. see this man out in Sheffield <laughs> or out in Malta. Um, all he wants is some seafood or some sushi and no drinks, just water or whatever. What do you, what do you, what do you drink? They're like, do you like Coke, Pepsi, whatever? Yeah. Coke, some Sprite, you know, whatever, gotcha, some sodas, gotcha. whatever the case would be. Hey, it's, right, a, it's a funny thing. A quick, quick side note on that. It's a funny yeah. thing. Cause anytime I do go out or with some of my friends, even though I'm like the only one that doesn't drink like half of the time, everybody thinks I'm the one that's like drunk off my ass. I, I don't get it. It's like, it's happened <laughs> on like multiple different occasions. We're just like, yo, is he like, okay. Like, is he like good? He's like, no, like, he's the only one that's over here. <laughs> yeah. It's um, crazy. So it's I could have swear. I remember drinking with you in Austin or, or, or seeing you mess up or something, but you're just, you know, after you compete, you're probably just high on life and, and, you know, high on carbs. I just and, be vibing, man. I just yeah. Be yeah. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Well, that's your style, man. I love it. Um, I'm super pumped for you, man, for Sheffield and for everything that you got on the horizon. So I thank you so much for doing this, taking the time to do this podcast with me. You know, we're two weeks out. You're obviously a super busy guy. So I really appreciate your time. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, you have anyone that you want to thank before we go? Any, any sponsors, anyone you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, for sure. I mean, first and foremost, got to thank Joey and the flex fam. Um, mm-hmm. without them, I don't think I'd be in this position. Um, so gotta, you know, say just thank you to all of them. Uh, mom, dad, sister, everybody that supports me back home and all my friends, you know who you are. Um, from a sponsorship standpoint, obviously got to thank SBD cause they're putting on this huge production in the show. So thank you for taking a chance on me. Um, also Titan nutrition, um, uh, D wall 20 saves you some dollars there. So guilty plug, uh, mm-hmm. shameless plug right there for you guys. Um, they've been keeping me right and helping me stay, stay on top of everything. And then also the healthy kitchen who's uh, also been taking care of my meal prep because I just don't have the time to cook for myself anymore. I'm, I'm just getting that busy. Yeah. Um, and then last but not least, my boy, Chris, Joey's brother, um, he started a clothing brand called the uh, the, the, the official Big Body. Um, and so I'm officially an athlete with them and just lo- loving some of the stuff they're doing. So shout out to them as well. Um, uh, check it out. Dwell 15 saves you some dollars there. But um, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. Thank you for taking the time to interview me. I'm always super humbled that somebody cares what's going on in my life. Oh, and yeah. so I'm um, uh, just super excited for the opportunity. And I hope that next time we meet each other, um, uh, that we're, you know, we're recapping that, that everything I said here is true. Um, and we can, uh, we can enjoy that and shoot maybe maybe i'll even break my no drinking rule for uh for a quick celebration with you my man yeah absolutely man and then uh definitely in malta you know we're gonna have we do we can break the no drinking celebration there when you win back-to-back world championships um so yeah man well this has been a great interview man i really appreciate it this is delaney wallace 83 kilo world champion and with that peace out